Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim, who's shaking his head at me as I do the introduction, making me laugh, because he's unprofessional. Look at him. Okay. Look at that beard. So that, <laughs> you need to trim that beard a bit, too. It's going to be a bit bushy at the sides. Oh yeah, I bet you'd love that, so you can come over late at night when I'm asleep and pick out all my little hair trimmings from the trash and then add them to your hair doll, you sick freak. <laughs> I, I, I know what you're on. <laughs> That, that went in an unexpected <laughs> direction. I, was, I did not see that coming. I was expecting, oh, what about your beard, you hypocrite, or something along those lines. But no, I, I got your weird <laughs> cut hair fetish person. Which, not to, you know, kink shame anyone, if that's what you're into, that's completely fine. As long as you're taking people's hair with their consent, that's there's <laughs> absolutely nothing wrong with that. But, yeah, creeping into strange people's bedrooms at night and taking it unbeknownst to them uh shame shame is all i have to say about that then we could start a service where people if they want to they can donate their, their shavings and you know these, these people i don't want to call them freaks but these freaks can like you know pay for the, the shavings and get them delivered to the house sure. so they don't have to get creepy they can just get them get them delivered i mean in this day and age i'm surprised that service doesn't already exist to be quite honest hmm what movie are we talking about today? It's a good question. <laughs> we'll talk about horror movies. This is actually a special episode, not because of the conversation we just had, but because this was the winner of a Patreon vote. Every month we have a vote to uh, for our patrons at the $5 tier and up. They get to vote between four movies. There's usually a theme, you know, maybe it'll be all vampire movies or all werewolf movies or all whatever. Um, and this was actually the last of three votes because it was October we decided to have three we had two for our patrons in the usual tier and then we had a public vote for everyone uh, we already did the other two you know Gremlins won the knee-high mischief uh, Howling won the public werewolf vote and this is the classics vote this was like four big movies that we hadn't got around to yet and the winner by a hair no pun intended based on that last conversation but the winner <laughs> by a hair was Phantasm I don't know why I paused for a round of applause, but I did. <laughs> That's cool. People are probably applauding at home. Oh yeah, they're standing up or they're in the car listening to this and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> effing Please phantasm. Please don't stand up while you're driving, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, chaos in the motorway, yeah. Oh dear. Um, so, Phantasm's classic is obviously the first in a franchise. Uh, it became a franchise. It was actually, I, I often forget how big a gap there was between the first and second movie it was almost a decade before the second movie which is weird to me because for me there was just always four movies there's actually five of them now but that's i'm still getting used to that idea i've not seen the fifth one yet uh given that we're doing this though we are probably going to do the rest of them over the next well which is weird because we've now committed to a lot of other franchises but hey we can spread them out nice and then we can have we love them. franchises we do we do at least for now until we run out of them and that, then we can do other things but uh, so Phantasm is a film by Don C Cascarelli. Am I saying that name right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, he 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 is a director who is known mainly for these, but he's also done some other things. He's done Bubba Hotep. He mm -hmm. directed John Dies at the end. Uh, that was mm -hmm. that was relatively recent, you know. Um, not as recent as Phantasm Five, but uh, <laughs> quite recent. So he's done some different things. Uh, this became kind of a cult movie back in the day and has got a big cult following, down to the fact that uh, the fans call themselves fans, but they spell it with a PH. <laughs> so, the, the, you know, the, the fans. Uh, so that, that's, that's pretty fun stuff. But, uh, so we're going to talk about this. We've both seen this before, uh, of mm -hmm. course, and we'll start spoiler-free. We'll get into spoilers halfway through. We'll give you a warning before we do so, of course, uh, and we can get into it. So, what is Phantasm? Phantasm is a movie about a kid named Mike, uh, who lives with his big brother because their parents passed away some time ago in a car crash. And basically, one of the, the big brother, Jody, has one of his friends, Steve, is killed. Uh, we see that at the start of the movie. But everyone thinks it's a suicide. They go to his funeral. Uh, at least Jody does. Mike is told to not go there. One of Mike's traits is that he follows his brother wherever he goes because he's worried that he's going to leave him and ship him off to an aunt because he's, you know, he's not capable of being a parent. Because you know, he's a young 20-something guy. He wants to go and do other things. And he witnesses something strange. The the the, the crypt keeper, I guess we'll call it. I mean, he's not known as the tall man, but like just in terms Same of his profession. Like the funeral director? Funeral director, yes, probably a better 
about our uh, uh, yeah, the, he's not the crypt keeper. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. We do a lot of tales from the crypt, okay? Well, my yeah. head's not in the game. It's you know, it's late. <laughs> I'm drinking Red Bull to stay awake here. Uh, you know, noise. Mm. <laughs> ah. So he sees something strange. This funeral director. After we see that it took like six men to carry this coffin and put it in the ground. This funeral director picks it up by himself, as if he has super strength, and takes it away. There's also these little druid dwarfs running around in the little sort of like Jedi robe looking looking things, running around, they're, they're being creepy. And he starts having these nightmares, something's creepy is going on, there may be something going on where dead bodies are being stolen by this funeral director, what is he up to? And that is about all I'm going to say, uh, bef- you know, in the spoiler free section, because yeah, I feel like you go any further on that, you start to spoil things. But the movie is largely about Mike wanting to investigate this and then trying to convince his brother Jody that there's something going on and should they intervene and look into it. That is that is Phantasm. Tim, do you enjoy Phantasm? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Do you, do you even have to ask that? How dare you? I goddamn love Phantasm, alright? Let me tell you something, Petey boy. Phantasm is a god damn masterpiece of a movie this movie is phenomenal it is so freaking good it's it's just so weird and surreal like i don't i don't don't know why people just aren't always constantly talking about how freaking weird this movie is but it's like the kind of crazy weird that i dig like uh obviously won't go into too much without spoilers but like the tall man, the, you know, metallic floating balls. It has this really surreal dreamlike quality to it. The music's great. It looks great. I absolutely love everything about this movie. You know, I always ask just for the audience's sake, if you like the movie, Tim, <laughs> you don't have to attack. It's not a personal attack. <laughs> where I'm like, you know, I'm not actually sure if Tim likes this. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you ask me that? <laughs> I know, I was, you know, playing it up a little bit, but I, in case anyone out there does not know of my love for Phantasm, uh, I'm going to shove it <laughs> into your face how much I love it. And those pubes are unshaved. They're connected what, to the source. P- sure. <laughs> pubes? <laughs> Where are we going? Because we were talking about shavings at all the time. Not me. <laughs> okay, yeah, I like Phantasm as well. This episode's already <laughs> off the rails. This is a giddy one, clearly. Uh, Tim's in one of these moods. But yeah, I, I like Phantasm a lot. I love Phantasm even. Uh, Phantasm's a fantastically atmospheric movie. And I think what I love most about it is that it really feels like this low budget movie that some friends made together on weekends for about a year. It, yeah, and it, it was an independent movie. Well, it was not. Like, no, the, the way I just described it is what it is. Like, it's, it's these, yeah. they, they had some financing, of course. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, it was actually the director's like mother's friends, like because the yeah. lawyers and doctors, like they, they all like, you know, invested in the film, and yeah. uh, you know they got a decent payday because I think I think it cost about three hundred thousand dollars, and then it made like twelve million at the box office, and that's just been, you know it's an initial yeah. release, but you know in terms of yeah. the return and then the. You know, given inflation, how much of that was at the time, that's, you know, uh, tidy little profit. 12 million now is nothing for a movie, of course, but, yeah. you know, times are, times are changing. But, yeah, so, like, it, ha- it, it does have this kind of homemade feel to it, and not in a bad way. Uh, I was actually thinking, watching it again, how it's amazing to me that there was a time when low-budget movies typically still look like movies, whereas these days, because people shoot digitally on video and like, they use different techniques... Like, typically nowadays, if a movie's got this kind of budget, it looks just bad. Like, it's the, the visual of it looks bad. Uh, yeah. Not always, of course, those, those exceptions. But, you know, that, that's that's kind of a thing. And here I'm watching it, and it's like, yeah, this is low budget. You can tell they're, they're, they're scraping by, and they're, they're doing all the things they can. They, they can. And, but it always looks good. It's always got this atmosphere to it. It's always got this small-town creepy vibe. Uh, I will say this, though. I think this movie would only be half as good if the music wasn't what it was. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I, the, the, I, I agree with that. The music is phenomenal. The music basically doubles the points. It, it gives so much to the tone, the atmosphere, 
Uh, in fact, just before we started recording, Tim caught me humming it. I was sitting going, <laughs> do, 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 do. I've, you know, I love what they're doing the second one with the music because they jazz it up. Yeah. I've, I've heard a thrash band version of that that tune. It's Ooh. quite a, quite a famous uh, bit of music, or at least yeah. cult, in the cult circles, people like it a lot. Honestly, uh, I'd probably put it up there with like some of the best horror soundtracks. Like, oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, this probably like this. Um, you know, Halloween, obviously, Suspiria, Exorcist. Uh, I think it goes like right up there with those guys. Yeah, and Exorcist is cheating because Exorcist is, 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 it wasn't written for the uh, movie. They do two Chupla Bells yeah. from, yeah. you know, elsewhere. Make Oldfield. <sighs> Fits so good, though. Yeah. Um, now, I gotta ask you, mm. uh, Are you, were you watching the remastered version? Of course I was, Tim. Okay, all right, just checking, just checking. That, this was the first time I actually had a chance to watch it. I hadn't oh, seen nice. the, the remaster yet, so that, this was me checking out the the newly restored 4K transfer. Not in 4K, I, I don't I... have a 4K TV yet. I'm, I'm, I'm not rich enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, you know me. I'm a, a layman when it kind of comes to this stuff. I usually don't notice, like, you know, shit like picture quality, sound quality, or whatever. But this is, like, one movie where I, for whatever reason, I it really hits me, like, wow, this just looks and sounds so good. Uh, I actually saw uh, last year at, um, there's a film festival uh, around here I like to go to called uh, Beyond Fest, and one of the big things last year was they are doing a double feature uh, so they're showing like the premiere of the remastered version of this, um, along with the premiere of the uh, fifth movie afterwards. And I was lucky enough to go to that, and it just looked phenomenal uh, seeing it on the big screen. And uh, that whole night was maybe one of the like best movie going experiences I've had. Uh, it was just so fun seeing it in a crowded theater, and they were throwing like um, these little plastic uh, like silver balls uh, around which I'm really mad I, I didn't get a chance to grab one because uh, it would have been an awesome souvenir. Um, but they, they're also like passing out like little donuts, uh, like the silver balls and stuff. And it was just a, such a blast. But basically, Tim, suffice it to say, the remaster version looks amazing. Tim was upset he didn't grab the balls. Yes. <laughs> just to put that in perspective. I don't, I'm being awkward. My, my iPad's dying. I'm trying to charge it whilst we're talking. Oh, okay. oh that's fair. Um, but yeah, and uh, it's pretty easy to see too. I believe it's uh, streaming on Shutter. Uh, if you have that, you can watch it. If not, the Blu-ray uh, I, I think is not too expensive, and uh, I'd say it's definitely well worth it. But uh, I think it was actually Bad Robot that mm. uh, remastered it because um, you see their uh, logo at the end of the movie. Yeah, um, it's funny actually. It's one of these weird things where Phantasm has a really weird. I, I don't know if. T- t- Two and three ever got a DVD release in the US? Two does. Two uh, does. Okay. I, I have one and two on. Oh wait, did you say DVD? DVD, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I have the blu rays I'm not sure about. Because I remember one and four being released, um, and then eventually the UK got a really nice box set with the four of them, uh, because the rates were uh, just you know they were tangled up in the US, whereas elsewhere they were better off. And it's kind of happened again, where one and two is out Blu-ray in the US, but there's actually a really nice box set of all five. Um, that came out in the UK, which I don't know if it's region free. You may have to look into it, but it's the sort of thing where you may want to get a region free player just, <laughs> if you want to import it, just because you get all the all the series in a nice but shiny box. Yeah, yeah. I, I I would like that. Um, I, I don't want to give my thoughts away on some of the other movies, uh, so I'll keep my mouth shut for now. But I would not. still love it, any franchise, um, e- even if it's just like one or two movies. Uh, I like. I, I always like having the box set. Um, yeah. Luckily, all the movies are streaming on uh, various platforms. I think most of them are on Shutter, if not all of them. So I actually did watch the third and the fourth one this month, uh, which was nice. Yeah, actually, but... on that subject, it's funny to me, actually, just to talk about home releases of things. It's, it's really funny to me that the the releases of Phantasm, uh, at least these box sets, the DVD release, when that happened, was Anchor Bay, which during DVD times was the, you know, it, it was the place for cult horror movies that was yeah. like they were the company who were doing everything that was meaning something they were doing these great releases you know they did your halloween your Donnie the deads your all the, the big stuff See, I'm, I mostly know them from uh seeing their logo every time i watched any of the evil dead movies which was probably like once a week when i was in high school yeah, so the evil dead movies <laughs> um but it's funny because they, they kind of died out and it was actually funny like, it was stars that bought them and then they kind of just went hmm. away uh, oh, that that makes that actually makes a lot of sense because Stars has like a lot of actually really good like horror selection. Um, mm. 
and so uh, yeah i guess that would make sense but they didn't keep all of it though because a lot of it went to uh arrow arrow was the one who did the new box set and arrow are uh-huh. you know is arrow and scream factory those are the two there's a few other smaller ones but those are the two main ones who are putting out so much stuff in terms yeah, of your completely... cult horror things yeah that, that's weird I, I completely forgot about uh anchor bay it used to be such a big deal and yeah pretty much everything now is uh it used to really be scream factory and then uh arrow um I, I think it's kind of just starting to make its way like in the u.s like i didn't really notice it that much until maybe around this year or kind of late last year but it seems like it's kind of full force now like they're releasing well, a lot this, of stuff this is the thing uh, is that people imported them all the time because they were reason free mm-hmm. uh anyway uh, okay. so people just imported the arrow releases anyway because they were really good like uh some of the early ones are a little bit spotter on the video quality but then they started mm-hmm. doing lots of remasters and stuff and they have a really nice collection of movies now yeah, yeah like a lot of times even if i'm not uh like super crazy about the movie if it is arrow i might get it just because it's very you know it's gonna have a really yeah, yeah the cover art's gonna look great they're probably gonna have a lot of good special features they're basically the criterion of shitty horror movies or i mean yeah. i should say <laughs> cult horror movies they're not all shitty yeah. some of them are really good but yeah <laughs> but yeah that's just a, a bit of a tangent just in terms of releases and being excited about them and stuff but uh, Actually, one last one last note about that uh it does drive me crazy which you know it's probably a rights thing but i do notice like they'll put out a lot of special editions for like sequels and stuff in movies and, uh, and i'm just like ah oh, like why do you have an awesome version of creep show 2 but not creep show 1 like uh it's isn't it because I, the, warner brothers has creep show 1 that's why <laughs> these goddamn rights to horror movies are like the bane of my existence like every <laughs> every time i want like a nice box set or just to have something on blu-ray it's always tangled up in some dumb idiot's basement that doesn't want to get rid of it yeah and for the record on the scream factory versus uh uh arrow <laughs> yeah <laughs> on that debate as to which is better i do think arrow is the better company although i have a lot of scream factory blu-rays as well partly because they just started putting a lot of things out that no one else was putting out yeah uh, they have a lot of good selection but i don't think and they do some good extras I don't think the remastering process is quite as uh, strong, typically, as uh, as Arrow do now these, these days. But it is, I'll tell you what, I, yeah, I bought a um, couple of movies like from Scream Factory for this month, and yeah, they did not look mm. the best, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. Especially since I feel like Scream Factory as well, they're going, they're getting a few, uh, like, more mainstream things like i think that the, 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 zack snyder's done in the dead of all things they like they licensed that from universal to yeah. that uh that and land of the dead uh come out at the end of the uh, month but for the most part like a lot of what they're doing now is that they've done all this sort of stuff that people wanted and now they're digging into all this really weird like l- you know never heard of stuff and I- i'm glad they're doing it like i love the idea that that stuff's available on blu-ray but i think that's why like a lot of it looks like crap is because it's, the, it's not the type of movies that people have remastering or kept well over the years and true uh, right. it's just kind of that thing whereas arrow seems to be doing a pretty good job of keeping keeping the releases exciting they, they do various different things they, they have some releases that get released you know uh, in all territories or some that are only us or uk and uh the region coding might vary a little bit depending but mm. uh no but look into them if, you, if you're into uh, collecting that sort of stuff then that one's, and if you're just into streaming then obviously just get shudder and you know Maybe Amazon and whatever else she is. Yeah. Anyway, back to the movie. We went on a <laughs> hell of a tangent there about uh, home releases. So, uh, what did we say? We talked about music. Music was really good. Fantastic yeah. music. Look, look great. Remastered version. Fantastic. <laughs> but the movie itself, what is good about it? What, what, you know, all the music. What, what, what works? What uh, all this stuff? Um, I, the characters are great. Like you know, uh, you really sympathize uh, with Mike. He's that like right kind of age where you know it can kind of remind you a little bit of when you were growing up and he's you know like a, he's young but he's kind of like acting like a little older for his age but he has like serious problems like where yeah he you know all he has is his brother but he's worried that he's gonna leave him and uh there's almost like a weird like if he took out some of the gore and stuff like it could almost feel like a you know like a amblin kind of vibe to it like an 80s like you know or kid adventure kind that, of movie. That, that is not what i thought you were going to say um i can kind of see no now that you've said that i can kind of see what you mean yeah if you toned it down a little bit and maybe which i, I mean I, I like it better this way but yeah. I, I could definitely see it like that 
Yeah, it gave it maybe a bit more of a, a sweet tone, you know, rather yeah. than this like creepy, like the world's ending kind of vibe that it has. Yeah, yeah, I, I can I can see what you mean. I, I think uh, I, I, the movie is largely about uh, death and getting over death. Like a, a lot oh, yeah. of it's really. I mean, it's not all metaphorical, but you could argue that you could take it metaphorically to about this kid getting over the death of his parents. Uh, yeah. And that, that's why he mistrusts adults and he mistrusts all this stuff. Like, all that's in there. Um, yeah, yeah, he he's pr- makes pretty good. And Jody's pretty good as well. Uh, Reggie's also good. Reggie's another staple oh, yeah. of the <laughs> franchise. Uh, he has that, that iconic, you know, balding <laughs> at the front, but he has a ponytail at the back. Mm-hmm. And he wears his ice cream truck uniform. Uh, yeah most of the time so he, he's like the, he's like the friend character and he's he's named after the actor as well because he's, he's based on the actor <laughs> he's like <laughs> the director's friend got a role in the movie as basically himself yeah. uh but yeah he, he's there too so he, he, the characters are pretty good yeah um yeah. and they're honestly, all likable they feel like people that like they mm-hmm. feel real like like oh i like hang out with these people like uh sometimes i like kind of them just yeah sitting down and <laughs> jamming on the guitar <laughs> Yeah, and apparently the the first cut of this movie was like another hour or maybe another ninety minutes long. It was like <laughs> huge. Yeah, they used some of it in the fourth movie for like extra flashbacks that we've never seen before. But oh, okay. apparently the first like cut, the first like screening they did, like first test screening, was a disaster because the the cut oh, was no. so long and there was so much stuff in it and uh like and so i can kind of guess what some of it might have been based on what's in the movie but there's some of it where i'm like what, what did you have what, what, what did you <laughs> fill all that time with um well because i think they filmed like three different endings because they weren't even sure what ending they wanted to use and stuff like that yeah. so also but one thing i do want to like really uh, commend it for is typically the effects the practical effects that oh, they, yeah. they do which i i think again I, th- I think it was like the director's mother who designed some of these uh <laughs> real family yeah. affair uh, and they're, t- they're typically pretty fun. That they're pretty cool looking, e- even if they're maybe not completely realistic. They're usually mm-hmm. entertaining. Uh, the the only time, honestly, the entire movie where I felt like oh they're cheating here is there's like a without going into too much details for spoilers' sake, but there's like a sort of bug type thing, and oh, sure. it's flying around and they've got it trapped in like a in a jacket. Mm-hmm. And it basically, after you see it at first, it's just in this jacket. So the actors are just going like this and moving it around as we have a sound yeah. effect. And it just, it kind of reminds me of like Star Trek when they all pretend that the, you know, the ship is shaking. So they're all, they're all just going like this as the camera yeah. shakes. Uh, <laughs> like, it reminded me of that. I could just like, I feel like on set, this must have felt so stupid. Like them just going like this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but, but all other than that, the effects are great. There's, there's uh, you know, there's blood, there's stuff being cut. There's, uh, you know, uh, all, all over the place. Plus, you get the ball that's flying around. Yeah, the balls are awesome, <laughs> and uh, it just sounds weird to say, but uh, well, to that's be fair, great. The... It's just one ball in this movie, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, that sounds about right. Well, I, I don't know if because you see you see the ball multiple times. I don't know if it's supposed to be okay. the same ball or arguably it's a different ball. But we we but... have no reason to believe <laughs> that this is a different ball. <laughs> But I mean th- that's cool. The tall man himself, I think, is a great villain. Um, I mean, mm. I I don't know if there's anything like more iconic than you know him just going boy, like that is like that actor uh, Angus uh, Scrim Trim Scrim Scrim yeah. Trim. Okay, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's just so good as this big, tall, weird, creepy dude. He is, and he is pretty tall. But they actually did a few <laughs> tricks to make him look taller than he actually yeah. was. They, they they deliberately put him in clothes that were too small for him to make him look skinnier, and like, as, as if like you know, it's kind of, kind of funny, uh, or or too too tight for him, I should say rather. Uh, but they, 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 they put lifts in his shoes to make him even taller. It was just a, they, they really give it this 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 feel. It has such a presence. He is so creepy, and he feels like a character. He he, he belongs up there with all the other like. You know, you think Freddy, oh, Michael, yeah. Jason, Leatherface, Tall Man is up there. Tall Man is in that that realm. Without a doubt. Um, and just to explain the balls, because I, we keep talking about these balls <laughs> flying around, just just for people who haven't seen the movie and have no idea what Phantasm is, uh, part of the the arsenal of the villain is he has this sort of silver ball that flies around and like spikes come out of it, and they you know all attack. It's basically it's almost like a, a defense system for for the mausoleum that is kind of like yeah. one of the main settings of the movie. Uh, so there's just, just you know it's this chrome looking ball 
And whenever there's a fancy special edition box set, they usually have a, <laughs> a packaging version that comes in a ball because mm-hmm. that's Phantasm's thing, the silver balls. Yeah. And it's a it's a really cool like introduction to them too. When you first see them, it again like a lot of you know parts in this movie, it, it's kind of strange. It comes out of nowhere, and you're just like, what are this, what is this weird floating ball? Um, and then yeah, it quickly becomes like super dangerous. So you know, flying at you, you know, spikes out, and uh, again leads to some really cool gore moments. And um, you mentioned the you know the cemetery, the mausoleum, uh, the graveyard it's a really really cool setting and you know kind of surprised like more horror movies you know don't utilize uh you know graveyards and stuff as as a setting it's it's so creepy but it's one of these things where as i was watching it and i was again paying attention because you know as as someone who's made student films and you really have to you know scrape Mm -hmm. and like oh can i use your apartment to film in for a location and stuff like that i was like you know i'm looking at this movie and they have this mausoleum which is a great thing to have like the fact that they have I, i don't know like if it was operational or if they knew someone who owned it or if they i mean i don't think they built a set it doesn't look like a no. set it looks like a real place uh, but I could, I could be wrong of course but um <laughs> but the idea that they had this one great location so they kept going back to it they had the entrance <laughs> to the cemetery so they kept using it we see it like multiple times we have the house where the, the, the guys live and that's you know that's, there's a few other places but we keep going back to these places over and over again it's like they're using their locations really smartly and they're saying no this is what we have this is what we're going to use yeah uh and it's great. Uh, so, so, so really um, distinct looking mausoleum as well. It's got that white and black kind of marble like all the way up and yeah. the floors and all that as well. And it feels kind of maze-like. Like, mm-hmm. I never really get a sense I knew where I was in the building as they were walking around. Every hallway looks the same because it's all just these these crypts on the wall. Yeah, yeah. it's and like something about it just doesn't, like, I don't know, feel right. <laughs> it, it just, uh, like, I, I don't know, it's just like, yeah, it's like a place I don't, want to be it works really well in the movie otherworldly yeah yeah, uh, yeah obvi- great, great there's some insane stuff that comes into play uh in the second <laughs> half obviously we can't talk about any of that without spoilers <laughs> i will say i op- i love some of the stuff that opens up uh in terms <laughs> of the th- mythology we go oh this is kind of what's going on okay <laughs> however and then... I, do, I do have a complaint though okay i do have one complaint and it's about <laughs> the ending and I, I, it's been a while since i'd watched it so i'd actually kind of forgotten how out of nowhere the final like two minutes were yeah um and it's actually it's, it's almost a running joke that the, the the series does have kind of weird continuity things that happen mm-hmm. and they're never really explained you never really get a sense of what was actually happening uh basically when you get to phantasm 2 you'll be like okay i guess parts of that were true and parts of that <laughs> were and like you just kind of go yeah. with what works for the second movie but Honestly, the end of the movie is a little... Is this abrupt change? As if there's like a little twist and it's like, but when when did this twist start? I don't... Like... Uh, so... No. But... Yeah, it's a, I, yeah, I just I feel like it's a really abrupt change. But it's, 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 it's a big thing. I'll talk about it more in spoilers, but... Yeah. Just, it, 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 that That's fair, I think. Um, yeah, if, if maybe I had like... A little time like i'm I'm fine with the ending and maybe i would like something different but it it's uh yeah it, it doesn't bother me like too too much i kind of even love the title like even that is kind of like weird it's like all right well i i know obviously what a phantom is like phantasm you know is it not as you know common of a as a, a, a saying or a word and even that just sounds like a little off, uh, which I like. You know, I was curious myself. I've just googled the definition. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I, I, it's funny though because growing up, I knew it also as Batman: Mask of the Phantasm. Uh, <laughs> right. So I, I was familiar with the word. It simply means an illusion, apparition, or ghost. Oh, perfect. So uh, definitely fits the movie. Yeah, no, it, it does. Um, but what's funny about it though is that I don't. Th- uh, yeah, it's not until later in the movie where you really get a sense of those ideas are in play i don't think mm-hmm. like for a while it's just this kid investigating this this mm-hmm. uh you know this creepy mausoleum this creepy this creepy tall man who's up to something uh you've got these things um the cast aren't amazing like they're not like um, the best actors in the world but they're, they're, they're very mm-hmm. like i feel the kid especially like he they, works because he's basically playing himself rather than he's a good actor yeah. if that makes sense yeah i would say like maybe the performances aren't like uh you know crazy good but they feel like authentic you know 
Yeah, I, I think it's one of these weird things where I, I love the movie. It does feel a little bit rough around the edges, where you, you kind of feel like mm-hmm. there were these friends like scraping these, this thing together every weekend and they were trying to like, get things done. And uh, you yeah. forgive it when there's a little moment of like, oh, shouldn't we see that moment in between those two things? You're like, ah, oh, they probably just didn't get it or whatever. But you, yeah. you kind of forgive it because it, 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 like the passion's there. It feels so genuine the, the way it's kind of been assembled lovingly over however yeah. many years it took to make the bloody thing. Yeah, and, and we kind of talked about this stuff before, but like that almost makes me like it more. Just like when you, you know, when you see something that's not like, uh, you know, oh, th- you know, this isn't super clean and neat, perfect little package, but you can like see where like the blood, sweat, and tears went into it, and that it was like a, you know, passion project for the people involved. It's like, oh, I, yeah, I'd much rather see stuff like this than you know some sleek, you know, huge budget kind of movie, which. You know, not that those are always bad or anything, but it's really cool seeing this kind of stuff that people can do on, uh, you know, small shoestring budgets. Yeah, it, it helps the, the mood, it helps the atmosphere, it gives it a tone uh, that I, I think would be missing if you made this with, like, ten times the budget. Yeah. I, I honestly would. And the funny thing is, is Phantasm 2 is kind of that movie, because Phantasm 2 <laughs> had, had, had a budget because a studio came in and backed it because the first one did so well. Uh, and we get, like, a, an interesting result, which we'll not talk about, because we'll talk about that when we get to Phantasm 2. <laughs> Uh, so I think we'll give the spoiler warning now, All right. and we'll talk talk about spoilers. Uh, so where to begin with the spoilers? Uh, right, having the sex scene in the graveyard. <laughs> I mean, it's the, the opening scene in the movie, so yeah, yeah it, it, start, it starts with a bang, if you will. <laughs> now, do you think? Can you imagine anything scarier than? having sex with someone and then all of a sudden <laughs> they turn into the tall man <laughs> uh, very few things very few things <laughs> Which i'm not saying i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with having sex with a tall man like if that's what you like that's totally fine but like wait did you just say a <laughs> tall man or the tall man <laughs> <laughs> either or uh okay but <laughs> I I think if you're having sex with something else that turns into the tall man, that is terrifying. I like how you said that is something else, not someone else. <laughs> you're having sex with something else. Tim, you're getting too close to those goats. I've been warning you about this. I've told you not to do it in the past. Stop it. <laughs> I'm a, I'm an ambassador of free love. I don't want to... Everyone has their thing. I don't want to impede on any of it. <laughs> as long as... Yeah, Tim, Tim's motto is as long as it has at least two legs, it's fine. Yeah. Anyway, Two- <laughs> t- <laughs> what were you going to say, Tim? I, I, I sensed a bad joke coming. Go on. Oh, no, no, no. I was, I was just going to add an addendum to that and just say, you know, as long as, you know, two legs and as long as they're of age, you know. So. <laughs> the ghosts left to be 18? <laughs> they better be. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or, is it, or is it 18 in goat years? Is that is that when it's okay? Uh I'd have to go to the rule book what, for that. What, oh yeah, the rule, the rule book on consent with goats. Yes. How do you know a goat's giving consent? <laughs> which is highly different from <laughs> which means no. Exactly. You gotta know these are important things to know before engaging in uh, these kind of things. <laughs> we've had we've had like shaving fetish we've had <laughs> we've had goat sex we, we've we've had some mm-hmm. wacky wacky tangents tonight uh Crazy. so what was i talking about yes the sex scene at the start so <laughs> yeah it's this kind of sex scene in, in the cemetery and like it's just this close-up shot of her face but then it quickly cuts to the tall man for just a second it cuts back to her like it mm-hmm. changes back but it's the idea of again the idea of an illusion but like there's something like this that's actually there that's you're not seeing you're this this woman this the lady in lavender as she's credited as like she, she is just like a fake image uh that that he is seeing and then he's killed we don't know why at this point we just know that we cut to the funeral and you know jody's there to uh, see off his friend with reggie because uh, they were a trio apparently i mean i think they were in a band together or some such uh but yeah and she's like a recurring theme because she almost gets jody at one point she, she she lures him out to the cemetery and it's actually because mike's been falling on the he ends up getting harassed by one of the dwarfs and the the robes, and he you know he runs past them and it, it breaks up the uh, what may have been the second murder. Yeah, that's actually a pretty funny scene. It's almost like a Looney Tunes esque or something because 
yeah, they're like doing their thing, and then you just see Mike run by him, <laughs> like mm. just screaming, and Jody's just kind of like, oh, "That's my little brother!" <laughs> like, and, and it's, it's actually kind of funny. I'll tell you what scene I love in this movie. So it's after a couple of okay. these these moments have happened, and he really suspects that something's going on because he sees him, you know, pick up the coffin, and he sees, you know, what's going on. This is weird. Is there a scene where Mike's just walking down the street in the middle of town? and he's just oh yeah he just looks across the street and the tall man is just walking down and all the sound like sort of goes away the theme is playing and you just hear the thumps of the footsteps and it's actually reggie's like trucks right in front of him it's actually <laughs> the dry ice from his yeah. truck and it's like that's, it creates this mist and the tall man just kind of turns around and like looks right at mike and then like sort of breathes it in and it's just yeah it's that's creepy. like it, it, that's so awesome and, and i feel like that's like next level like you know, uh, a scene where I, I don't know. I feel like you could show that to people. Like even if you don't like horror movies and, and stuff, if you appreciate good filmmaking, good scene work, like this is a scene you could show someone, and I, I think it would be impressive because it, it just comes together so well, and uh, it's so creepy and uh, everything you, about it is awesome. Do you know what I like about it? I like that it's creepy in broad daylight in a public yeah. space, but there's tons of people walking around. But you just forget all those people are there, and you just focus on this creepy man looking at you. It's it's, 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 it's quite impressive and obviously Mike being who he is he's told not to do anything but Mike being who he is he decides to go and investigate and I, I like that the theme kicks in as he grabs his knife and he's yeah. like you know he puts that in his, uh, his little holster and he, he goes off um, which is you know when he encounters the ball he almost gets caught mm -hmm. he has to hide in the, the, the coffin and we see the ball like it's actually like a guard who's there who ends up getting the ball in his head and it like drills into his forehead <laughs> and like starts spurting out blood if I have a complaint about yeah. that scene, my only complaint is you, it's weird that you never get a shot of all the blood on the floor. Mm. It's really strange. Because okay. you see yeah. the mate get up and he walks away. And I just I was noticing that they're really avoiding that floor. It's almost like they didn't want to have to clean it up. <laughs> Maybe. So they <laughs> that didn't, makes sense. Because so I, I get the impression that when it was spurting out the guy's head, I mean, they're in the location, but they could have had, like, you know, plastic down and, yeah. and yeah. stuff. But maybe they just didn't want to actually stain the floor, and that's why there's no blood mm. on the floor. But it just it stuck out to me. Like, but again, this is one of these little things where I was appreciating it because I can see why they couldn't do it. And I was like, yeah. okay, you did everything <laughs> you could, but you couldn't show me that because you know, <laughs> for X reason. Because there's no way to fake that. Like, if they want to put it on that floor, they have to put it on that floor. Yeah. Uh, at least uh, what they are showing us, though, looks so damn good. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. just seeing the ball fly into it, and then uh, it's awesome. Like, it, it has this little, I don't know, like a exit port to it where just the blood just gushes out and it's, it just makes a really cool like a uh, visual well, that ball can't hold all that blood so of course it has to spot it out <laughs> it's true. Yeah. simple logic tim simple logic <laughs> it's basic physics is what it is true, uh, true. And actually again talking about the tall man his entrances are i mean pretty much every entrance he has is great because he, he there's mm -hmm. this moment where like mike's not looking and he just he walks out like you know from around the corner at the end of the hall mm -hmm. and he turns oh, and yeah. he, it's sort of this robotic turn where he, he stops and then turns and then he's looking <laughs> down the hall at mike <laughs> and then he chases him and mike you know gets and i love how close he gets like it mm -hmm. almost feels like at the end of every shot he's about to grab him and then oh, yeah. and then the next shot he's not he's still just a little bit behind but this is where he he, he cuts off his fingers at the end because he gets some trapped like he gets his hand trapped in the door uh, yeah and this yeah, is it and this is what convinces Jody, of course, because he has the finger that's still moving around in the little box, and then it turns into the bug and, and all that stuff. I, yeah, I, I love the scene uh, where he finally believes them. Like, you know, because it's such a big thing in movies where you know, oh, someone's seen something, and then the other doesn't, person doesn't believe them, and you know, they're pretty much like clueless till the end of the movie. But I love it's really simple. You know, he's like, no, like check this thing out, and uh, Jody's like, fine, and. It, it, it's real simple all he does is he just like looks at it and you don't even actually like see it from his point of view you just see him look into the box and he just closes it real quick and goes okay i believe you <laughs> it's like it's like i oh, love that it's just like you're forgetting a shot you just see it from his point of view i thought that was first when uh uh buh, 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 mike first opens it or something no no it's, it's that oh. moment it's when he opens it and you actually see the finger oh, okay. and you see the yellow blood oh okay and it's moving all right, all right, but uh, yeah, it, I like this just all like, so quick. Credibility yeah. lost in an instant. <laughs> Completely gone. Never getting it back. All right, well, whatever, sir. <laughs> uh, uh, 
but I I do really like this scene though, and I like that. Yeah, Jody's just instantly on board. Like, all right, I believe you. Like, let's like figure out what we're gonna do. Because because uh, when it turns into the bug, they're going to take it to the police, but then it's tr- it's trying to kill them, so they're the, you know they have to put it down the garbage disposal, which is what Reggie sees because he just comes over. He's like, "Hey guys, what's happening? What's hip?" You know, he could yeah. all kill, and like he sees that, so he sort of starts to believe things, um, and that that's kind of what propels the rest of the movie. But I like he's like, "Okay, I'm going to go and check this out. You're staying here, mate." He's like, "But no," and like he's like, "No, you're staying here." I'm giving you a gun, though. Here, shotgun. Take that. <laughs> uh, yeah, just give your thirteen-year-old kid brother a shotgun. Yeah. That's a, that seems like a wise move. And he takes a handgun and he, he goes to investigate himself. And of course, he gets attacked by a little, you know, druid dude. Yeah. And he goes on the run. And that's when the uh, what appears to be the hearse without a driver mm-hmm. chases him through the streets. <laughs> and luckily for him, Mike, who again is thirteen years old, drives up in his car. <laughs> and like comes and gets them, and we actually, we actually, this is again, this is like such a low budget movie that was made by friends on weekends, and you've got a car chase scene where you know the guy, the guy's in the front, he's coming, th- he's going up through the sunroof, and he's like firing the shotgun back at this horse. You know, they've <laughs> done, a, done a pretty good jo- job for a movie yeah. with such such modest sort of uh, roots. Good. Yeah, uh, I agree a hundred percent. And I, you know, I forget about a lot of. Um, these scenes when i watch this movie I like because there's so many iconic stuff that it's like uh yeah like you know you remember the tall man like you know saying boy and you know the the flying ball and uh all this thing uh and then i'm always kind of surprised when i rewatch and i'm like oh no there's like so many different like cool stuff in this like yeah there's the her scene and uh, you know all the little <laughs> Jawa looking people and Jawa. That's um, what it like. I, I don't like making yeah. Star Wars <laughs> references, but that's kind of what it like. Yes. <laughs> but there's like a lot of cool, uh, yeah, action scenes, and it's uh, and it moves really quick too. I, I don't think there's, you know, like a. I, I would I would say not really like a dull moment in here. It's it's pretty fast paced and, uh, you know, it crams a lot into the runtime, which is. What is it? About ninety-ish minutes. Yeah, it's not that yeah, long. It's just ninety minutes. And it's <laughs> after this to get Reggie involved, and they get Reggie to come by with his truck and they trap the the druid in the in the truck. Uh, yeah. And it's finally at this point where Jody goes, "You know what? Maybe my thirteen-year-old brother shouldn't be involved in this." <laughs> Reggie, go and take him to some characters that we've never seen in the movie before who own an antique shop. Which I'm guessing <laughs> in the longer cut originally they had an introduction. But the uh, like weird um, was it soothsayer or? Gypsy? No, no, because that was the, the fortune teller at the start, because this was like, oh, you know, okay. they, they go to the antique shop, and it's like, you know, it's like, uh, um, uh that's two women I, <laughs> who, who work at the antique shop. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, a part that always throws me. <laughs> well, it's, it's not it's a big deal, but I'm just assuming yeah. that in the longer cut, they get like an introduction, we actually knew who they were. Same with the, the woman who lives with Reggie. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think she's Muller, but I, like, you know, it's it's yeah. it's hard to tell. Like I feel like these characters probably got introductions in the in the long cut originally, uh, but that's not to say that I think that it's a mistake uh, to take them out because I guess mm-hmm. the, the pace is so tight. He made cuts. He looked at the movie. He made cuts to make the, the movie flow the way it does, and I think it does. I, I don't I don't think not knowing who these characters are before we go there is a, that big a deal. Uh, yeah. I do think it's a little bit funny though because the the movie keeps moving forward and Mike keeps not telling Jody things that for why he's there. Because he goes to the antique shop and he's looking through the old photos of the town and he finds one of the of the cemetery from like a hundred <laughs> years ago and he sees the tall man in the photo. He's been here all this time. And he's like, right, listen, ladies, I have to go now. Take me home now. And <laughs> they're driving back and the ice cream truck's flipped and <laughs> we have a bit of chase and the druids get the girls. But then he goes back to, back to Jody who's just been sitting at home this whole yeah. time. For, for reasons he's been having nightmares himself that, that's another cool thing the imagery of the nightmares where like, the hands come up and pull them down and like gravestones yeah. come up through the ground and all the rest of it but you, you have him going back and then he's like oh the the, the, the druids the, the munchkins they, they, they got they got the girls and the, I think they got Reggie mm-hmm. as well and he's like damn it it's like well, you're staying here I'm going but he never actually brings up the photo the whole reason why he wanted to go yeah. home <laughs> was to tell him that he saw this photo and he never actually does but you know whatever it's not a big deal uh but of course uh we see this a lot more in the second one 
But we do get a little bit of a DIY stuff here because mm-hmm. Jody want to keep Mike safe, traps him in his room, and jams the door shut. Mm-hmm. Mike, though, has a shotgun <laughs> shell. So he decides yeah. to prod it and tape it to his hammer and, you know, basically hit the door with it to get a little shotgun blast effect. Uh, I could be misremembering this, but when uh, I saw it last year, uh, Don Cascarelli did come out and he gave like a little intro for it, had like a, a short Q&A. And mm. um, I, uh, I, again, you know, this is over a year ago, so my memory is not the best, but I do believe he mentioned that this is like one of the questions he gets asked the most often is like, would this actually work? And uh, and I'm pretty sure that he said like, oh yeah, they either knew someone that uh, told him about it or did it or basically researched it, but I, I'm pretty sure that this is like something that would work if you tried it. Not that you should, but... Okay, I wasn't sure, because I, I, I wasn't sure... <laughs> Is it the pin that he puts in that sparks the uh, the blast? Maybe. I don't I'm know. Not sure. I wasn't sure because that's the only thing I wasn't yeah. sure about. I, I got the idea of putting on the end of a hammer so that it was a little mm-hmm. bit away from your hand so you could like hit something, but it was just yeah. what actually sparks the the, uh, the detonation's a bit of a strong word, but you know, right. like actually it ignites the gunpowder uh, yeah. essentially. Um, but yeah, so he he chases after him. So once again, we're back at the mausoleum. Mike's there. Mm-hmm. Jody's there. They quickly run into each other. They, then they run into Reggie. Reggie's just okay. He's <laughs> running around, which is one of the things because Reggie just sort of shows up behind them and he's like, "Oh, hey guys, I'm okay." Uh, the girls were here too. I got them yeah. out though. Uh, they went through a window and ran through the forest. I feel like that was probably a scene that was cut. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense because he just shows up and says, "Oh yeah, yeah, I saved the girls. They're fine. They're away." Like uh, uh, that was weird. Okay, like I yeah, imagine there was. One- I imagine there was probably scenes of Reggie like getting out of his restraints or something and then saving the girls mm-hmm. and then you know but they cut it all yeah. out for time yeah that, that makes sense and uh, it's one of those things where this could be like you know uh, a lot more annoying in a um, worse made movie but luckily you know you kind of let stuff go like you don't really care as much because you're having such a good time and uh, yeah, you really it, just invested on the, the characters and what's happening. It's funny, though, because I, I don't really think the scenes themselves are needed in the sense that I don't really need oh, to sure, yeah. save the girls. It's just kind of whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, it is, it, it's actually weirder that he mentions it until, right, you know, because yeah. <laughs> um, it, it does feel oddly absent because we, because, mm-hmm. cause the thing is, is we, we could have just bought that the girls got away in the car. We didn't really necessarily need to know that they were kidnapped. And you could have yeah. just avoided having to tell us that. But it was just it was one of those little things that's kind of weird. But this is where things get really interesting, because they find this room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this pure white room that's, like, you know, overexposed. And there's these barrels. And when they look inside the barrels, it's, it's these it's these uh, dwarves, these these people. Because we found out, by the way, uh, like the dwarf they, kill, they killed in the, the hearse was actually the friend who died at the start of the movie, Steve. Mm-hmm. But he'd been shrunk down. He'd been squished down <laughs> into half size. And it's like, okay, so they're stealing bodies and they're reanimating them, but only at half size. That, that's what's <laughs> happening. And so they're in this white room and there's a weird noise. There's, there's, there's like a hum, mm. almost as if there was a generator, but it's not a generator. It's more of like a tuning fork idea because there's, there's these two metal pillars in this mm. pure white room. And you know, as they're investigating the barrels, Mike, of course, being the kids, curious, he goes up mm. and he sort of puts his hand in and he sort of see it between the two bars, it goes through like a invisible barrier. Like it's, it's as if there's a visible door. It disappears. Door. Yeah. yeah. He pulls it back out and then he puts it back in a little bit more, pulls it back out and he puts it back in again and then he sort of falls in. It, something pulls him in and he actually goes flying into this. And we see him go into what looks like a hell dimension. And it's red skies and there's like mm-hmm. this desert and we see lots of these dwarves like all in a, a row getting out of these barrels and walking somewhere. And Luckily, Jody had his hand in and he grabbed him and he pulls <laughs> yeah. Mike back out. So we just get this quick vision. But when he comes out, he's like, they're slaves. They're, they're, they're <laughs> making these dwarves as slaves to, and they're putting them through this portal to their planet. This is for yeah. so, this is for another planet. And I'm like, oh man, this this movie just opened up. Like, what what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, like most of the movie, you kind of just think like, oh, this is a movie about these two brothers fighting this weird, creepy cemetery guy and then what you come to find out is there's this much much bigger plot going on where this 
creature is you know taking dead bodies from earth and putting them into this other dimension or planet or whatever and it's shrinking them down and turning them into slaves and it's like what the hell like i i love how crazy it is but at the same time it doesn't feel like you know sometimes you watch something and it's weird but it's like oh that's just like weird for the sake of being weird like this feels like a fully thought out um you know, plot, they, even they, though it's crazy. But. They shrink them because of the gravity. The gravity is lower, <laughs> which is something he mentioned. But I, I like that he comes out of the, the little portal and he, he says all this, and they're all just kind of sitting on the floor, sort of still in shock. Yeah. And Reggie just goes, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and I'm like, Reggie, shut up. I, I know you've seen some weird shit tonight, but that's still a bit of a leap to just believe yeah. what he just said. <laughs> like, a, a part of it does feel like a... I don't know, maybe it kind of like a 70s thing. Like, it, it does feel like a little hippie-ish in a way. Like, people being like, yeah, man, that's crazy. Like, what if they're doing this? But, it, uh, it's funny, because I think throughout the movie, the first time you watch it, you maybe think it's more of a satanic thing going on. Like, you know, the tall man's, like, yeah. part of a cult, and that the, the druids are, like, these followers or something. Like, you know, I don't know. And it, then it's like, no, it's actually, he's he's actually farming slaves for his home planet. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> that is suddenly far more interesting. I am so yeah. into this, um, and it's it's, yeah, it's just it's fascinating stuff. I and mean, we also know he's been around doing this for a long time. We know he's been here for like a hundred years at the very least. Uh, so so of course he ends up chasing the, the three of them around. Uh, Reggie gets stabbed. Uh, the the because the, the the tall man once again turns into the lady in lavender, and he sort of flickers <laughs> between the two of them as he stabs Reggie, and Reggie seems to be dead. <laughs> and the the you know the brothers go home. They say, okay, I've got this plan. There's an old mine shaft out up in this hill. I'm going to go and sort of camouflage it so we can try and lure him there and like get the tall man in there. And mm-hmm. for some reason, he thinks it's a good idea to leave Mike on his own. Even though every <laughs> every single time he's been on his own, the last like three times in the movie, Druids or the tall man himself has shown up. <laughs> you know, Remember the scene earlier on where the, the, he opened yeah. the front door and it was just the tall man standing and goes like, I've been waiting for you, boy. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like that happened like the last time he was left alone. And sure enough, here we go again. He, like, mm-hmm. uh, the tall man shows up. He chases him around the house. He he, he ends up running outside. He, he runs all the way up to this main shaft, almost as if this, if this was a plan. Like, he gets mm-hmm. to this, this hole and he jumps over it and the tall man falls down and then, like, Jody's up on top of the hill going, yeah! You know, he throws some rocks <laughs> down and all these rocks, like, fill the hole. It's like, yeah, we did it. As if this was the plan. As if they knew the tall man was going to come after them. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, whatever. I'm not really fast. But the weird thing about all this, though, is that as soon as they're celebrating, it then cuts to Mike waking up. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts to him in front of a fireplace. And he's with Reggie. Mm-hmm. He's alive. And Reggie's like, hey, Mike, it's just it's all a nightmare. It's all a nightmare. You're just... You're coping. You, you you've been like this ever since ever since Jody died. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> Why did this happen? Yeah. What's going on? Hence, the, yeah. hence my complaint about the the shift at the end being very sudden and kind of like I actually kind of like the idea that yeah, like we're not really sure what's been real and what's been an illusion the, the entire movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that's okay. Um, I actually I saw a very interesting theory because basically, so what happens at the end is we find out that. Yeah, jo- Jody died, presumably in the same crash that killed his parents. In uh, Reggie's now looking looking after him, and mm. we get obviously we get the final jump scare where Mike is into his bedroom and the tall man because like, he thinks it's all been a dream, and the tall man's in the reflection. The mirror's like, hey, boy, uh, <laughs> and then you know the, the the druid hands come and grab him. And it's, it's this sort of yeah. cheap jump scare at the end. Oh, not cheap, but I say cheap because I know it's basically ignored in the next movie, which is yeah. why I'm saying it's kind of cheap, but. So that's, that's, that's kind of how the movie ends. But I did, I did see an interesting theory, actually. Because okay. obviously, um, before they leave the, the, the room with the, the, the metal pole, the, with the portal to the other, mm-hmm. the other world, uh, Reggie actually, he kind of stops the frequency. He, he like, like the tuning fork. You see him oh, right, a tuning right, yeah. fork earlier in the movie. Mm-hmm. But he, he stops the, the frequency. And when he does that, when he puts his hands on both, you know, both pillars, uh, the... the, the 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 vortex the the you know the the teleport and the like, mm-hmm. hole starts to like suck in everything it sucks all these barrels in and he's like fighting to not go in and he go that's just before he goes outside and dies 
And there's I've I've seen some theories that because he did that, it messed up reality, and that's why things mm-hmm. are like in flux, and that's why the the continuity is so wishy washy. Is because ever oh, since okay. he did that, like it caused problems because like, he died and then he didn't die. Yeah, uh, and it's it's like reality is not constant, but the tall man is aware that it keeps changing. The tall man's actually in on uh. it; he knows what's going on. I thought it was an interesting idea. Uh, as the, as like it that, yeah yeah as it plays out in the movie itself though, it just feels like this random. Well, okay, what was a dream? What yeah. wasn't? <laughs> and then it, it kind of ends. So that 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 would be my, my one main complaint. Really, is the the endings are a little bit unclear, and not just in the sense that. Or they want it to be ambiguous, more in the they weren't even really sure what the ending was supposed to be either, so it's just kind of what the ending is, except it, have it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it does kind of um, help that the whole movie has felt very dreamlike. That, yeah, to have uh, this ending where you're waking up from a dream, uh, only to have another, you know, weird thing happen pretty soon after. Uh, I, I do think it works. Um, I mean, maybe I would have liked something uh, a little better, but I'm, yeah, fine with it. Um, if anything, maybe my one complaint, uh, a little less so with that, is more of the whole mind shaft thing. Like, um, <laughs> like uh, I, I think maybe there could have been a cooler way, you know, to get rid of the tall man um that's actually kind of why it, it buys into the idea that it has all been kind of faking in his head because it seems too easy true yeah yeah it does it does seem a bit too easy uh mm-hmm. but i think the question then becomes is you know wh- when did it stop being reality or was it just all in his head was all of this but then it can't be because the, the tall man's actually there at their end which, which is why it doesn't quite add up you're like some of it must have been real which is why the idea that it was real but then reality changed because of what they did uh, in the mausoleum yeah. uh kind of kind of makes more sense because okay it was real but then things changed yeah and uh if memory serves i think they might talk about some of these concepts in the fifth movie uh it's at, at this point it's been about a year since i've seen it and i've only seen it the one time and it was like pretty late at night so well um, obviously I, we're going to get to that uh, yeah. in a few months and i've not seen it yet so Keep your mouth shut. Yeah, dirty Tim. <laughs> I'm not giving away any spoilers, but I, I do think that's something they bring up, if memory serves. But maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Mm, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So, best not to think about the ending too much. Uh, right. But otherwise, I love the atmosphere. The, all the creepy moments mm-hmm. work really well. The tall man has such a great presence. The location, the mo- mausoleum specifically, is very good. And I can't, I, I really can't emphasize enough how much the music adds to this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, is, it is glorious, it's beautiful, it's eerie, it's, uh, it works as an action theme, because it kicks in sometimes mm. when the characters decide to do something, and it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's time to act. That's kind of the feel it has, on top of being creepy. So, uh, very, very fantastic score. I, I, I can't recommend that enough. Um... I always like to pair this with um, one of my other favorite horror movies, uh, you know, Evil Dead 2. Um, not that they're necessarily very, you know, similar. Like, that, or you know, there's... At all? <laughs> <laughs> but, but for some reason, though, I just feel like they go really well together. Uh, I don't know if maybe if it's the kind of the, like, um, I mean, like the, the, the action-iness of it, you know, where instead of having heroes that are just constantly running around, you have ones that are like also kind of like fighting back too or, or something. But I don't know. For, for some reason, I always uh, I, I like to double I, up the, these two. I think I mean, or maybe it's just because they're two of my favorites. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's uh, it's worth mentioning, actually. Yeah, that, that kind of separates it. Because for one, it's not about a group of characters being stalked the whole movie and dying one by one. It's not, uh, you know, it's actually kind of weird to have an all-male heroic cast. Like all, all the people who are like, potentially the victims are all male there's no female kind of victims in the movie you know all on the friends yeah. who get kidnapped briefly then get rescued off screen but like our main characters are all male and i think it's an interesting difference that they all they, they do all kind of choose to fight back they, they they go looking for the villain to try and stop them uh yeah and i think that's maybe an interesting difference that maybe ties in and i think that's why it appeals so much to because i i think anyone especially uh, guys you know who grew up in the, the you know we've all went through kind of make stage in life where we're kind mm-hmm. of at that weird stage where 
we're, you know, we're trying to act a bit older than we are, but we're not really that old yet, and we kind of have that thing. The idea of him wanting to be the one who spearheads this, no, we need to fight back. Like, you know, one of the first things he says after he's like, it's, it's after the scene where he's working in the car and like one of the druids is like, you know, tr- almost kills him with it because he, he lets the car go down while he's in, underneath it. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about that scene. There's not much to talk about really, but it, it it's just... a good scene though. It's a good scene, but you know, he's in the car and you see some druid feet running by and then like, the car drops down. Uh, and then, you know, jo- Jody comes in and he's like, that was one of those druids. It was one of the ones that was watching <laughs> me the other night. It was one of the ones that attacked me. And he's like, what are we going to do? Like, he wants to be proactive. Yeah. Like, right, right from the start, he wants to be proactive. Um, which is funny because one of the main things in the movie is uh, the idea that he's scared. Uh, at the early start of the movie, he goes to see a psychic briefly. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. It's just, it's just like kind of weirdly out of nowhere. Yeah, it, it, it wants to it ask. Cool, it wants, yeah, he wants to ask if his brother's going to be leaving him soon. He's, he's worried about yeah. that. But she does this thing where she makes this box appear and he, he wants to put his hand in the box, <laughs> but it's too scary. And he, he, she's like, no, you have to like let go of the fear. You have to be brave. And uh, mm-hmm. that's actually, like, I think one of the arguments is to, like, let's say it is all a dream, right? If all this is an illusion, mm-hmm. like this box is at the start of the movie. Um, that's why he ultimately is able, because as he's being chased at the end, we have, like, much like the dreams he's been having, we have all these hands come up through the ground and try and grab them and pull them down mm-hmm. in the mud. And, like, you know, the tombstones come up and all that stuff. Uh, but he's able to fight it away and keep running. He's able to overcome his fear. And I think that's why he's able to get away is because he's kind of had that arc where he's not scared anymore. And yeah. he's like, this is just an illusion. This is not real. Or it is real, but he's, he's you know, regardless, it's, it's working in that way where... He's being fearless, and because of that, he's able to get away. Like the, the illusions, the, the phantasms that, that the mm-hmm. tall man are, you know, putting in his head aren't working anymore. He's able to fight back and fight them yeah. away. So that, that's kind of his arc for the movie, and that's uh, yeah. So it, it, it does have that thing, and when you when you compare it to like you know, movies with kid characters like the Goonies or your Amblin movies, <laughs> I think that's where you you would have the comparison where it's about the the kids, the focal point, and the kid overcoming his own thing is what the movie's about. Well, is there anything else you would like to uh, discuss in Phantasm? Uh, I think we pretty much, yeah, covered anything, or covered everything. Uh, and the, again, it's just, there's a, a special feeling when you watch this movie that you just don't get, uh, you know, on a lot of other horror movies where it's the, yeah, I just feel like the dreamlike quality of it like seeps out of the movie and into you know the room when you're watching it. It's just so unabashedly strange and surreal, but in such a good way. It you know it doesn't feel like cheap or unearned. Um, I don't know. I just it's really really a phenomenal movie, and uh, I'm kind of surprised that it like it, it does have its hardcore you know fan base. Like you know especially like horror nuts, a lot of people like it, but um you know i'm kind of surprised it's never really reached the the heights of other horror franchises you know, it, yeah, like, it doesn't it's feel not, like a well-known name no it's not in the mainstream literally the only time i can think of it being mentioned in like another tv show or movie and i'm not doing this intentionally but it was on the hit television show buffy the vampire slayer oh okay <laughs> there's a joke in season four where xander for halloween uh went to get phantasm from the video store and they gave him fantasia oh. instead <laughs> I, I just I, I, I just remember him going it was supposed to be phantasm it was supposed to be phantasm <laughs> and, that's a know, pretty good joke <laughs> that's a pretty good joke but like you know other than that like, it's the only place i can think of where i've, I've heard it mentioned like in pop culture like i, I feel like yeah. I, I don't hear about it as much and it's a shame because uh it's definitely deserving of the attention it's very good yeah. uh but i guess it's weirder like you know it's weirder than halloween it's weirder than even Nightmare on Elm Street, which is all about dreams and shit. Like, dreams, yeah. But it's, you know, it is weirder than that because it's not as... Because I feel like Nightmare on Elm Street is like, no, there's a guy who kills you in your dreams. It's a very, like, you can pitch that to someone in an elevator mm-hmm. quickly. It's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's complicated, but it's simple to get. Like, complicated to write, complicated to make sure it works, but mm-hmm. simple to say to someone. Oh, it's, whereas this is like, you can't really spoil the whole other dimension and, like, yeah. you know, slaving to for another planet. You can't say that if you want to convince someone to watch the movie. So you're like, oh, it's about these brothers and this, this you know, funeral director's kind of weird and creepy. He's up to something, but we're not really sure what. And it's like, okay. Like, it's not, it's, it's hard <laughs> to sell it to people, I guess. Uh, yeah. 
I suppose the way you just do it is, oh, there's these silver balls who fl that fly around and <laughs> kill people. I usually just say, shut up and watch it, you idiot. <laughs> Boy! <laughs> Boy! That was better. Aye. That was better. <laughs> Boy! Likes the boy. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, so, no, I, I guess we're ready to get to get to ratings then if we're if we're all done if we're, if we're done talking about scenes and whatnot <laughs> from the movie um yeah so tim what would you give phantasm out of 10 uh i'm i don't even need to think about it or hesitate at all i'm gonna give this a straight up 10 uh <laughs> this movie really is i phenomenal i i can't get over how much i like it um it's it's awesome um again Maybe there are little flaws you can point out, but they're so like they don't affect the enjoyment of the movie, to, or at least to me at all. And uh, I, I absolutely love it. So perfect ten for me. Oh boy, um, <laughs> I'm almost going to seem harsh with uh, my score now <laughs> with them giving it a ten, or maybe Tim's just too generous. That's all it is. Nope. <laughs> uh, no, I actually I, I give Phantasm a nine. Uh, oh, that's that's still that's fair, yeah. It's uh, yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm saying it's amazing. That, I call you crazy, but <laughs> yeah, like, I'm saying it's amazing still. Like I'm just saying it's not perfect, and uh, it, it's very high on the. Well, we're doing our top 100 list uh, every, every Tuesday during October. Uh, the first two parts are up. Just to plug those, uh, maybe you'll see Phantasm pop up in those lists, perhaps. Um, but. <laughs> Yeah, nine out of ten. I think it's amazing. I think the atmosphere is great. I love the music. I love the the sort of the the brotherly kind of like team up to try and take care. I love the the idea of them being proactive and try to fight back. I love the tall man. Angus Scrim's Angus Scrim's great. Uh, the weird creepy creepy atmosphere is he's changing between the lady and lavender and himself. The the you know the set pieces with the the, the ball and all this stuff. Uh, there's a couple of nitpicks. There's a couple of weird things. The biggest, of course, being the ending, being kind of just kind of confusing, and not in a David Lynch or oh, there's meaning to take <laughs> from this kind of way. Just in a yeah. oh, especially when you when you learn that they, they shot three different endings because they weren't sure what they wanted to end it with. It kind of like okay, I yeah, I can kind of tell by watching it. You didn't know how this was going to end. I can yeah. kind of see that, but um, oh, especially since it'd been a long time since I'd watched it and I'd forgotten Reggie died in this because. Reggie's in, you know, the second movie, and they're like, wait a minute, he can't be dead. Why was he dead? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember this. And then, of course, he's back alive again at the end. I, I really do. I really do like that theory uh, that you mentioned. I, I think that, um, yeah, pulls some uh, cool things. And uh, I mean, maybe you could say that, you know, it's a little cheap, but uh, I, I kind of like that it uh, explains some of these, you know, issues with the sequels and stuff that come up. It does feel a little bit like we're, we're making up a reason for it. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. it doesn't really, it wasn't yeah. really there. We've just kind of found a way of explaining it away within the plot, but hey ho. Um, although, in the second movie, Reggie knows about the tall man and he wants to help hunt for him, mm -hmm. which doesn't really jive with the ending of this where he thinks it's all a dream and not, none of it ever happened. Yeah. So, I don't know. Timey wimey, wonky nonsense. We'll talk about that in part two. Uh, Superboy punching. <laughs> A hole through <laughs> continuity yeah because the horror movie That's fans what... are going to get that reference <laughs> i mean i get it because i'm a dc comics fan but yeah oh well uh, there you go that that is that has been phantasm uh, a classic a classic a cult classic one that maybe deserves more attention than it actually does mm -hmm. get uh it's fantastic oh very good with a ph of course mm -hmm. fantastic uh, and of course, you know, it took J.J. Abrams to come along and say, no, I want to fund a 4K remaster of this bad boy. And sure enough, Thank here you, is. Yeah. It's, that's great. That's great. Uh, so, there you go. That's Phantasm. So let us know what you think of the movie in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters with the mailed underscore fuzz. Uh, if you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. Of course, that's how this movie was picked. Our $5 tier and up, uh, get to vote on it. Of course, we did announce this month our new $8 tier, the commentary track tier, uh, in which you get a group commentary a month, a solo commentary a month from me, and then weekly Buffy the Vampire Slayer commentary tracks from me. Uh, the first two movies, though, which went up in October, are free for everyone. You don't have to be on a tier. You can just go over to patreon.com slash TV and you can access those uh, and try them out uh, and see if you actually want them or not before you, you know, pay any money uh, try it you'll like it yeah try it you know me, me, me tim and matt talked about <laughs> darkness falls as it was playing and we 
you know, we, mm. I think we stayed on topic for about thirty percent of that movie. That, I think that's a good, <laughs> good number. Um, and I talked to myself during Halloween because <laughs> why not? Yeah, that's what you do. Uh, so yeah, check out stuff like that. Um, as we say, we've been doing lots of episodes in October because it's mm. you know the October thon, and you can check out all those that have been up so far. There's more still to come. The top 100 videos that we mentioned were do in four parts. Parts one and two are already up. Uh, parts three and four the next two Tuesdays. That's it. I've... <laughs> That's all, all the stuff to plug. Uh, I always lose steam. I've always got so much to say at the end. I always just sort of just train, steamroll through it, and I, 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 I lose wind. But here we go. That That has been us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies. Goodbye.